Okay. Well, let me just make sure I had the stream running properly. Give me just a moment. Trying to get chat up again. This thing's being a dingus. Yeah. I gotta get the chat rolling. Give me just a second. All right, square enough. So I've got separate tracks for just three main components, which is just melody, bass line, and harmony. And I am just going to be composing with a piano. Um, main thing at this point was I had a general motivic idea, and I'm just going to make a bunch of variations of it and kind of experiment with the different chunks of it. That way I can gather materials to later use. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and arm just a piano where is that coming from There we go. So the general premise um, was trying to come up with something heroic. So obviously leaps of fourths and fifths abound. Um, and what I came up with was kind of an E Mixolydian-ish. So I'll just play it real quick.
Hold on a second. I'm trying to remember it. I just had it on, had it in my brain on the way home. Hold on a second here. I'm going to tap my tempo in real quick. All right, so it's about 137. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I dig that. I dig that idea. So this is kind of like the basic rhythm. I'm just trying to make sure I can set the framework because I'm pretty sure, pretty sure my melody starts on beat two. I'm gonna throw a little like triplet jive thing in real quick.
All right, so it starts off from the five to one there, so. But I don't stay on the one for long because it's the beginning of the melody, so I think I just did a little grace note here. Turn step sequencing off for a second. So I think I might be programming this at double time. Give me a sec. There we go. So remember the second part of that phrase, you want to repeat the same motif, but end on a five or a four type chord. At least that's how I would do it there. So I'll just copy paste this. And when you do it this way, I'm also thinking about leaving space for a counter melody here. So you want to make sure you have that too. I actually wrote this on the ukulele at a stoplight. That was a very unintended key change. And for the next part, because I basically um, 
in a moment like this, you're going to have four parts to your typical melody there. So we're going to copy paste this a few times. And I'm actually going to make sure I write. I'm going to make some uh, quick little markers here. Okay, so in a typical 8-bar melody, we're going to need to make sure that we repeat this generally the first part the second time as well. And then I like to usually work on the ending to make sure that I have two endings, one of which is less satisfying and the other one that is more satisfying. So the few that I was coming up with, um, so I had a, an idea for the, at least the, probably this repeat right here, leading into the final eight bars, I guess you could say like bar six, um, which was, uh, let me see here. And then three four suspension. Hmm. Maybe I should put that here instead. So that we can end on a five for this part. So let's try that out. In worst case scenario, I can just switch it. So. And there's a nice spot for a rest here, too, if you want to throw some interesting accents in. So...
think I needed that to be a little longer. Explains why I didn't end quite as early, but that's okay. I can't I can't look at MIDI rhythm the same way I look at staff paper. I didn't have staff paper in the car, so. Let's see what this is like. Worst case scenario, I'll just have to fix it. Worst case scenario, I'll just have to play it in. I'll feel like a loser if I do that. And you know what? It's, I'm here, I'm using technology. Might as well just embrace that.
Okay, so it lands on this beat.
AJ. Applejack. Where is it? Nah, I don't really I don't really do that stuff. So it's it's kinda like I'd just be blowing money. I've got some that per percussion stuff that I don't use, so it's kinda like eh. Oh man, I forgot to open that other one in here. Yeah, come back here. I'm thinking maybe if I just lay the cords down it'll make more sense. That way I've got a good target here. Yeah, it, it probably does. I just, like, I don't know if you saw. This is basically, my template's pretty much laid out the way it's going to be, minus a few random bobs and bits, like choirs, organ, um, maybe a few ethnic instruments. But, like, if you, if you look at my percussion, um, there's my pitch percussion. Here's my piano instruments slash harp. And then this is all my non-tonal stuff. That's it. I, I don't even use a Gran Casa. Um, I'm debating of putting a Gran Casa in there, but uh, other than that, I mean, I don't use any Tyco or anything like that. So, yeah, I got Bob bit areas. So I'm trying to figure out why my brain is just not doing this rhythm. It might just be because I just went back to work for the first time in like seven days. My brain's a little fried.
So the main thing is planning our motivic fragment. Now with Reaper regions, I can move these around. So if I decide I want to put one before the other and everything like that. So I'm just going to make a bunch of regions with names and then increasing complexity or decreasing complexity. Because, I mean, I, I could totally have something like really slowed down um, for like strings without it being so jumpy as well. Like removing some of the rhythmic elements. So you could just do like a... So, I mean, you don't have to use it. You do. Stuff like that. So I'll come up with a bunch of different variations like that. So this is one of the, the endings I'm thinking. The not so strong ending, the... Or, or, oh, whoops, I meant, I meant me. So, um, I think, I actually think, That's another good ending too. There's a lot of a lot of good ones. It depends. Um, I don't. I. It's just a personal thing. Uh, I when you're especially when you're having a bunch of tracks. Um, ideally, what I should be doing is is actually recording all of these. But since it's like just a template stuff, it's usually not as important. But what I should be doing is recording all these so I can upload them at 1440p. But I can't change the settings on um, Twitch because I'm not like one of their affiliates or whatever. So it just streams whatever's available at the time. So one of the main things was I was trying to come up with a good motif for when I go to test brass. I want something very you know, jumpy and energetic. So especially with if you're trying to do like fanfare type stuff. It's not so I'm actually streaming I'm sending 1440p. Like if I had a choice, I would just do 1440p at, at 30 FPS because I don't I don't need any of that. If that makes sense. It's weird like that, because sometimes it has options and sometimes it doesn't.
I think that's a good, a good simple way to the second part of that. So let me see. So this is where I like just being able to just use the regions because I can I can drag these around however I want afterwards. So at this point I'm just picking picking for part. So um, I think I just did. Or. Yeah. Uh, it depends. I mean, you can set the key binding to whatever you're, you want. Typically, it's Shift R. So, yeah, and I'll show you that one when I'm done with these, these, uh, the next four bars here. Because I think I'm probably going to end up reversing these, so it's, it's a good thing to just watch, I guess. So, um, this one's, I'm doing a more simpler repeat on this one. I kind of like the idea of doing that instead. Hold on a second. I could do a three four suspension like that, but these are all like I'll probably record that too because I can just you know I could do something really modulatory there. So what did I do? It was like. Yeah, I think that's what it was, so. I guess I'd be like a sweeter. Throw some modal interchange in there. That could be one too.
Okay, so. I think I actually like that right there. There we go. That part feels a lot stronger. So, and then all we're doing is reversing this motif in the other direction. So instead of da -da -da, it's da -da -da. so it's actually still based on a third of the triad, even though it ends on the five, instead of the root, which is much stronger. Yeah, this this one's much smarter. Hold on a sec. Whoops. Now this would make more sense to have this after it. I think that is kind of what it, maybe I was imagining in the car. So there's a couple of ways I could do this. Hold on a second. So let me actually do that regions thing real quick. Watch this. Ready to have your mind blown, man? What was that? I actually don't know if this works in the MIDI editor, but I'm going to try it. I can't grab the region in the MIDI editor. Shloop! <laughs> you see that? It cut all the MIDI though, so I'd have to re-glue it. So, whatever. I'll just do that real quick. So I won't do that when I'm writing eight bars, but when I write snippets and I want to move them around, or song parts, like, because that's the main thing, is you can move around a piano sketch's structure until you get it right really easily this way. So if you've got an A section and a B section and a transition. So you said you're having problems with, um, yeah. got a little diced up there a little somehow I don't know what I did hold on I made a reaper too dark That seems so gray and washed out now. That's okay, though. I can see easier. I'll work on it. I 
I actually think this makes more sense. I don't know. Like, I'm kind of feeling this. Like a secondary dominant bot. I didn't want that to feel like it was staccato for some reason. So usually the third repeat, it's it's like a 50-50. It depends. Like the third repeat, like third bar, I guess you could say, or however you want to call it. In this case, it's like the fourth bar or fifth bar. Um, you really got to scope out your melody and like, is this boring? Do I really need to throw something really different in the mix or do I just need to keep playing on the patterns I have? So I'm going to listen to this just to see if I would be bored if if it opened with it. I'm not. However, I am going to do one thing instead of starting from the 5 going up right here because I feel like this is the spot where it gets boring. I'm actually going to start on the tonic. So so dun 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 Maybe something like that. Yeah, I like that because then we're ending on, like on this five seven thing, like or four five at the end. Because like in my brain, I kind of thought it might be more in the mixed Lydian realm because I kind of imagined like. But I could do like, um, you could do like, See, it's going to want to go up to that 5, so I could do the D, maybe I do like a D to the, I don't want to do that, D to A to D to maybe a G major. That would, that would be interesting, because that would be a chromatic median, so, because that's like the parallel major, so G major, because if we're an E major, it's like being in parallel of 
E minor, which of course is G major. So let's let's see how that goes, because that'd be an interesting modulation to end on the uh, to a, on a G major. Hold on a second. digging that. That's going in. It's on the books. So, uh, Damon, you were saying you were having problems with, let me just go back and reread that and make sure I had it correct. So orchestration and modulation and interconnecting the parts, it baffles me. Modulation is really, it's always been easier for me because I always think in harmony and that's like part of my problem is I have to actually focus on a melody because I could just come up with cool harmonies all day. Just all day. Never stop. Always thinking of harmonies. So, and that's kind of where I'm getting at. It's, I'm like thinking of how these chords are related. So, obviously, the D major makes this the whole Lydi mixed Lydian piece because my thing is, is, is I always want to have like this, I want to save Ionian for the end. No matter what it is, I want to save Ionian for the end. So the whole time, if I play like it's Mixolydian and I do that big-ass 5-1 at the end, you're like, oh, we finally got there. So um, I always try to think of melodies that are flexible when it comes to modes. So when you're writing a melody that is intended to be flexible for modes, you want to make sure that you're avoiding certain keynotes. And some of those keynotes, in this case, being obviously I put the third in here, which... If you can avoid it, it's nice because you can modulate between major and minor. I had one melody. Um, but half the time, it I still played a D major over it anyways. It was really cool. It was like Mixolydian with like random mode mixture. So it was like. But um, let me let me get that melody in or the uh, that those chords in and everything so I don't forget. Um, so remember on this third repeat, I don't want to bore them. So I'm just just to make this easier, I'm gonna move the whole thing up so I don't fuck up. So I'm doing the dun, 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 these. Okay, I'm just figuring out the uh, the rhythm there. So
I think that's good because having that that chord change, I might as well give him a whole, um, you know, quarter. Uh, I am gonna put those chords in so I don't forget them though, because they're juicy. Juicy. Um, I think that's right here. Trying to think of the Yeah, I think this is the best way to voice this, to have the A on the bottom. And then make sure I go up. So I'm gonna use second inversion. Yeah, because then second inversion it keeps the B on the bottom, which is like the five of E, whatever it is. Uh, whether I'm in, you know, Mixolydian or uh, it's just the five of the tonic. So if I keep that on the bottom, since this phrase ends with the five on the melody, the five in the bass in this case, it's going to still feel like almost like a half cadence. So and then I can still keep this nasty B on the bottom. Ooh, this is lining up very nicely. Oh, uh, yeah. Whoa, what ha oh, it's this ostinato is still doing its thing. Oh, no, that would be a little weird having that suspension. I was thinking about doing a suspension there, like throwing the C on there. There we go. But I don't need to do that there. It's fine. I'll, I'll figure out a better ostinato for it. You know what? I'm going to simplify that, and since D major is the 5 of G major, I'm just going to stay on the D. If I had more time for that chord change, I think I would I would do the D, A, G. But I think I'm just going to stay on, on the... Um, I like that rhythm, though, so I think I'll probably just keep that rhythm in the bass anyways. Yeah, so this actually also with the bass line keeps that Mixolydian feel, which is really nice too. Man, that, um, is as excited as I was to throw those chords in. Might need to stretch out this melody here a little bit.
trying to make sure I still keep breaths in there. This would be like the best spot for those trumpets too. I'm actually just going to try to throw a little like pretend trumpet thing in here so I don't forget that that'd be a good spot for it. Um, let me see here. So I think I want to do it that way. Yeah, something like that. I think that's how I want to do it. Or I might not do a triad there. Because I might just do this instead. That might be fucking screaming for the trumpet, though. That high B. Yeah. Just a moment there. <sighs> Maybe something like this. I think this probably makes more sense. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So I'm thinking about where the pockets are going to be for things like brass tabs and stuff and where I need runs. So like some of these uh, measures are less exciting, but they have rests at the end of them so that's where you'd throw like things like runs so like right here um right there you notice how you it's like there's a bunch of empty space here and you have too much time to listen to everything going on so like you could just go in here and let me just throw a step step on real quick and Um, let me see here. I could actually do a run in reverse. Sometimes I program runs in reverse. So I don't know if you know that Reaper can do this, but I might be about to blow your mind. So let me start the last note and go down however many notes I want. Diamond, do you have a, a preference? How many notes in this run? It can't, it's got to be odd, an odd number. You gotta come up with it, man. I need an odd number. It's gotta be a prime number. 
Don't say three. Eleven. I like that. So basically, uh, the eleventh note is actually going to be. Well, I could do it two ways. There's, I guess, there's a, a good couple of ways you could do this. You could, um, you could break it up into two pentuplets and then end on a um, a thing. Or eleven notes could be what you're working with, and then. The twelfth note is what starts on the bar, so let's let's do that because that's weirder, and you can do some interesting stuff with groupings and acceleration. So like, um, I'm gonna count backwards. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm actually gonna step sequence this backwards. So I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna count seven notes down and then five notes in a different grouping. So if I think about groupings, I could do like a number of things. So. Let's put that up here, uh, or the um, baseline, hold on. So I'm not throwing random notes in. Okay, so let me just make this wrong real quick. Let me think here. So starting backwards, let's go seven notes down. So one, two, three, four, five, nope, six, seven. So we end on the two. And then um, I have to correct that one note. So, but then this would be five. So let me try this then. So let me go from five to one. Or actually, I kind of like the idea of starting on the D. So I'm just going to do that. So it's actually going to look like a D Lydian type thing. All right. So I do need to correct that one note in here. Where are you at? This one. All right. So this is what it sounds like backwards. All right. Um. Now I. There's a couple of ways I could do that. I think I can just do it this way. So I'm using a Reaper script that just drags. However, um, you can actually, there's an actual action. A lot of people forget these exist, which is awesome when you're trying to um, really take a motif and come up with new material um, with all your inversions and everything like that um, and retrogrades. You can watch this. Hold on. So like let's let's just take just for fun, let me just show you what happens. So um let me take this one melody that I did and so let me delete that. So like, like, let's say this is our melody. I, I transcribed it in a horrific way. Let me solo this. This is our melody. It's not to a grid or anything, but it doesn't really matter. You can actually select this and go to actions. You can reverse. So you're seeing some of these options. 
So you can invert by intervals or just reverse the selected events. So that's what we'll do here. So let's just do a retrograde and reverse it. Now, obviously I probably wouldn't use it like that, but at the same time, oh, whoops, let me take step sequencing off here. You could still have a da, 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 da. Oh, it's a da, 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 da. I actually think what I would do is take this as inspiration but change it slightly to this. Or 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 what well, I'm sorry. Or Like that'd be like a really simple like homey melody. That script, ah, fuck, I cannot remember. I think it's uh, somebody's, I think it's like x um MIDI scripts. He has a bunch of them because you can do it. See, like the nice thing is you can do it with all kinds of shit. So like, let me show you a good example on another instrument. Because this also, I always, I used to forget that it does. This, but you can actually do it pretty phenomenally. So, like, if I want to record in a very expressive uh, cello line, for instance, right? Um, I fuck that up. So that was completely off the grid, whatever. I can go in here. Um, I'm going to completely destroy the rhythm, but watch this. So make sure CC follows note selection, right? So first things first, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars. I'm going to stretch this to eight bars. So if you do it by note, you're not stretching everything using that script. But if you have everything selected and you do it on one of these borders, it actually does the whole thing. I know it just blew your fucking brain. I know it just happened. Your brain just exploded. Now I'm going to need to move... Um, so... I like the idea of this being right here, but I want this to be on the beat, right? So I'm going to select uh, probably these. Hold on. So this, I'm going to select this first.
a couple of things. So I'm stretching everything. So in this case, I'm, I'm keeping all of my MIDI data from a, a real performance and just keeping it like in line. There's another way you could do this I could show another time. I think I've done a video on it, but I can't remember. Boom. Stretch. It. I. I'm not sure. Hold on a second. I mean, it does, but you can't do individual notes that way. So. That said, back to this run. All right, so this is going to end on the, I think it's, it start it need it needs to be here yeah it's right here that the run needs to end so i'm i'm going to select or uh, make it so this this last note starts on the b and then i'm going to reduce the grid by quite a bit here Maybe quarter notes, I guess. So notice we had 11. So we had two groupings, a grouping of five and a grouping of six. So I'm going to grab that grouping of six here, and I'm going to stretch it to this bar. And one thing you can do, though, in this case, is um, you can take the snap off. If And this is what I would do if I were trying to be more realistic. Because the runs are going to be blurred. Some things are going to be rushed. Some things are not going to be fast enough. If you were actually playing this, you wouldn't be like, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You wouldn't do that. You would probably do somewhere in between, especially if you were rushing. So what you'd probably do if this were realistic is you would shorten the five a little bit and lengthen the sixth. So let's just take, like I said, I took the snap off. I'm going to just make this five a little bit further back. I mean, I'll show you what it sounds like just raw dogging real quick. Because that's a good spot for a push. So, what I would do there, and um, in general, is like I said, I would pull this back a little bit. Let's zoom in here. So, we're going to take a little off of five, and then we're going to, you know, put it in six's pocket here.
In fact, sometimes I'll actually make the beginning take a little longer to get into the run. See, that sounds like a natural run. Let me pull that back up. That sounds like something a woodwind player would actually play. And I'll I'll just just to A B, I'll do the other one too. I'll I'll copy paste it and just do a snap to grid version. Though I can't actually make it like that fancy because I already warped this a little bit, but I'm... which one of those sounds real? This one to me sounds like an actual woodwind run. Let me just mute this item. Oh, these both need to actually have legato on them, so give me just a second. Actually, except for this one, I don't I'm not gonna do legato for this note right here. I'll just try to be specific about when the notes are rebreathing. I don't know. Make sure there's overlap. Then I'm gonna mute these. So And I was using Legato, I should be using, um, what's the word, the run transition, one sec, 13, there we go, in theory. Wait, is this on time? Yeah, it is. So if I mute this. Feels like it's off. That sounds pretty quick to me. Hey, you never know. Well, the idea is, <laughs> in theory, you're going to do both. So, um, let's do this. No, I don't think it was editing any of the shit I was doing. Oh, here, we're good.
That's weird. Shouldn't be. I'm not using any. That's strange that this one takes significantly different amounts of time. There we go. So either way, that's, I mean, that's the ideal way to do it anyway. So we got it. I'll throw the piano back in too. Yeah, we got it. Now, softer time. So, let's see here. Uh, do you guys want to see harmonies, counterpoint? Do you want to see just a counter melody in general? You guys want me to see do next, or I can just keep doing more variations. I don't, I don't, I don't give a shit. I'm saying, so I ain't got too much longer. I'm gonna be on, so I still gotta work tonight. I just, I wanted to get this written down because I was having problems thinking about what I wanted to do in 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 the gray area. It's like the third, you know, quarter that always fucks me up. You can usually come up with the ending. First two repeats, and then like the third one's like, oh, where do I go from there? All right. Well, I can show you some quick and easy harmonization if you're looking for like good counterpoint. Um, I'll actually do that with the two flutes I just pulled out here. One sec. Um, just change back to legato. Uh, I'm gonna just take a spot right here and. Actually, I'm I should I'm gonna copy paste it after the fact. So I'm just gonna start off. Um, let's do this in the key of F major. I hear a transpose that should not be there. I'll fucking end you. There we go. There we go. Wondering why something's fucking weird. What the hell? I do not. Oh, like, I guess I did have it. I don't. I don't remember arming the uh, cello. That's a real ghost note right there. It's coming from that fucking cello from left field.
just putting step entry on real quick. I think I could try to treat this as a as kind of like a grace note here so these two are kind of like treated like grace notes here so Yeah, I guess I should have spread that out a little bit more, but I kind of ran out of MIDI room, so I don't know. Um... So I want to remember that I landed on this. I mean, I guess I could just add more space here.
I'm trying to think if I want to keep it diatonic or. So, I mean, I'm not completely diatonic there because, it, you know, I'm doing um, kind of a uh, Mixolydian thing there. Meh. I, yeah, I guess I'll do that little like mode mixture thing. So, same pattern. Easier to digest. Even if you're changing keys, it's just easier to digest. So, like that, uh, that four three tonic. So, just doing that. Um, you can even throw that grace note in there if you want. Well, it's not really a grace note, but it's, it's kind of connective motivic tissue. I don't know if I need any of that. I can decorate that later. Let's focus on the the um the easy harmonization here. All right. Let me just give one good listen here. Random string. I'll fucking end you. Whatever it was, it wasn't important. <laughs> You're deleted now. Forever. I don't even listen to it. It's probably the best scrap in the world. So one of the, the, the key things you're going to want to keep in mind always in a situation like this, and I'll just put this up here just as a reminder. <laughs> so like basic tips here. I'll uh, just make a short little checklist.
So that's going to be like kind of like the basic guidelines. And I'm just going to double check, make sure this is actually um, visible. Okay, so everything there is visible. Like these are the three main motion, uh, things here. So if you do number one here, okay, and I'm going to show you how quick I actually do it because I just use octaves a lot. Um, if you do this, you're probably not going to have an issue with this. Just in general. The only time this is an, is like this can be a problem is if there's a leap. Because if there's a big leap, and you can think about this ahead of time, if there's a big leap coming up, and you're on a, like, let's say you're on a sixth, and then you go to a third with the leap, you're going to be going the same direction. So, like, you're risking having the same motion more than once. So you, you just got to switch them back and forth. And don't do it too predictably. Don't do third, third. 6-6, six, 3rd, six, third, third, six, sixth. So uh, I'm going to start here. I think I have it copied already. Yeah, I do. Okay, so I should be able to see both of them. I want to make sure that I can. So yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn them both on. And I'm just going to think about what note I want more. And I'm going to either move it up a third and then um, drop it an octave or I'm gonna move it down a third. That's the way to think of it. So again, I'm in like an F mixolydian mostly on this in this case. So um, you can start and end a phrase on a perfect interval. So you could scope that out right out of the gate. So what do you want to end on? So like let's let's listen. So I think a perfect fourth sounds good here. So um, you could do that. You could do an octave if you wanted. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep the harmony somewhat close. So I can't. I guess it kind of depends. So in this case, you can either work backwards or work forward, right? I'm gonna say let's just work backwards. Fuck it. Doesn't matter. We'll do it live. So we're gonna need to create some space by going from the other direction right out of the gate. So there's there's three options. Um, since this is kind of going into a perfect interval, we could approach it from same motion, but it's going to cause an issue where it's going to sound too much like the same voice. So contrary motion is a better choice in general here. So while I could do a third in this case and go from the F to the C right here, it's going to sound too much like the same voice and just a harmonization. So the smarter thing would be for me to go up a third. So in this case, if I'm on an A, I'd go to a C. Drop it an octave. So I'm on a sixth. That means I can either do another sixth here or I can do a third. So it really depends. Well, in, th in this case, I'm sorry, this is a third. Um, I can do another third or a sixth. So either a three down or three up and then octave down. Um, in this case, it's a B flat. Do I want a D or do I want a G? So, I mean, in this case, the I got a number of options here. I'm going to either have to have this decide whether or not I want this Mixolydian note right out the gate. Or if I want, um, you know, the A, which I think I want the A. So, if that's the case, if I'm a 6 there, I can really do either. So... But this is, then we're running into too much contrary motion right here. So, in that case, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go ahead and just do the, um, the D. So if I do the D, just... Wait, did I copy that? I should not have copied that. So remember, I wanted that A there. So I've got this same motion. I can do the A an octave down, um, but that's going to be a really spread voicing. Hmm. I don't have too much of a choice here. i got to do something. I have to change this to that A or G. 
Yeah, I might have to do that. Just have to. Just to avoid too much contrary motion. So I try not to put two of anything together. So right here we got contrary, same, contrary. So I could either establish a pattern and do the same or contrary here, or just pick a note based on which fucking chord I like. I really need to create some space though, so I'm probably going to do the third above it. So and if I did the third above it, I'm going to probably want to do the sixth on this one. So easy peasy. And based on this, um, I can either do a perfect interval or a unison. Uh, I think the perfect interval would probably be okay, but wouldn't make a whole lot of sense because this is actually the five. So maybe starting on the third. Now I want to move both of these up here because this is really too low. Now, this having that, like, regal feel sounds cool because of the, the perfect fourth. Um, but maybe I don't want to do the perfect fourth. Maybe I want a sixth. So, especially with the... Let me see here. What do I want? Let me think harmonically here. That's a G. So, I could either do a B flat or I can do an E flat. So, let's just hear both of those notes real quick. Versus, I, I think that's not a bad idea. So if we do that, I mean, we're just changing the note one, so it doesn't change our voice leading too much, but we can just play with this a little bit. Just do full on, screw it. I'm gonna do the same same motion, but this time really intentionally. Now that's a lot of similar intervals because this should be sixth, 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 sixth. Uh, mostly sixes here. Jesus. Let me let me change this a little bit then. Maybe this would be no. Hmm. Maybe actually, yeah. Let's let's do um the third here. So let's just throw these into thirds instead of sixes. So, even here. Now we've got this much more spread thing. And then we can go back to the uh, fourth here. And maybe on this one I'll do the... Um, yeah, this, this one kind of accentuates that curve. Um, well, it depends. So they're they're interchangeable, but basically the way to think about it is you're either going to be a third above, six above, or vice versa. I think of them from the root note because I'm working with that note, right? But they're always interchangeable. So a third above is a six below, and a third below is a six above. If that makes sense. So, so I kind of like this shape, um, because it actually um. This would be thickening the melody in that case because it's going to feel like one voice because they're all moving in the same direction. Um, in fact, you could accentuate this leap and make it really sweet by uh, dropping this one back right there. And it's an even bigger leap. So normally you don't want to cross voices because this can get confusing right here. Or we could leave that in thirds. Or we could do... I 
I kind of, I kind of like, if I were ending on this just to create some instability before moving on to another section, I think I actually like that. But, um, yeah. I think doing it that way is fine. Now, the problem is with this, this voice crossing is once this happens, your ears get kind of confused and it's not sure if this is going to that note or not. So you're generally going to want to avoid that, so... Just throw that back up there. Now, since we established that D, maybe we should just go back to it. It kind of has this whole tone feel. So, like, maybe right in this one spot, we can throw, like, a, a whole tone... Hmm... Yeah, because I feel like that would be a good spot for this whole tone thing. Because we've this this phrase is, is a whole tone run because you augmented fourth, and then second. So so like that would be a good spot for a nice little uh, nice little harp harp gliss. Hold on. So it was the. Um, so what I like to do is I I um. I actually program my harp glisses just by physically doing a gliss on in C major and then just switching it. I'm trying to think of where I want the gliss to end. Because I think we're ending, we're ending on this. Yeah, I think I wanted to end on that B. So um, that's going to basically create a an augmented chord, which sounds strangely, obviously happy-ish because it's got two major thirds in it. But um, let me go ahead and just patch that in here. I don't want to feel rushed, so I'm going to record it over here like a baby. There we go. This I, I always feel way better doing stuff like that, like this, because now I've got it. It's easy. So all I got to do... Just lining up that MIDI note, the last note right there. I might decide to change it later, but I do my glisses in C major and then just change the notes to what I want. So if I were going to change the pedals, remember you can always take any note, move it up or down, a flat or sharp to a black key, because that's how the pedals work. So in this case, um, I'm going to need this little run is going to be about right. Um, you're, you're just going to have, in this case, you're going to have an E flat. And the F natural is going to be there. Right. And then um, you're going to have that D flat as well. Uh, C is going to go to a D. And other than that, I think we're good because this is actually a uh, F whole tone scale, which is really fucking funny. Um, So there's my gliss. I like that. Yeah. So listening to the whole phrase and ending on that F F whole tone gliss. Mm, let me hear it again. Let me slow this down a little. I'm gonna add a tempo change here. Da -da 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 -da. Here we go.
Yeah. Mmm. And this is when you throw the um, Celeste and uh, Glock in. Hold on. I think I like the idea of doing this as like a seventh chord. And then we throw a uh, Glock. Where are we at? Actually, I could think of throwing the G over it. The G might actually be better to throw over it. So... I think I hit on a third note on accident. I'm going to remove it. Yeah, get out of here. I'm just going to reduce the velocities real quick. I hit them too hard, apparently. I hit them too close together, actually. <laughs> That's part of a problem. There we go. I'll throw some contrabass pizzicato in there. I'm going to actually figure out where I want to place those because I can't see the MIDI for the flute, so I don't know when they're coming in. And I'm not playing with the metronome, so let me just a sec to actually pull those up. So I can hear the intervals I want in my head. That's what I want right there. But more, I want a little bit of swing to it. So, dun, bo -dum, bo -dum. so maybe I'll just do like a... Um,
trying to think of how I want that. Or maybe I want this moved back on an entire bar on. Hmm, not sure what I want to do with the base there. Oh, I see what's going on here. I'll deal with it later. Figure it out later. But still, I want to hear that spot again. I'm going to mute those other notes. I like that. Um, so that's a good way to do that. Um, we can do some pocket writing for this one real quick. Let me just take a snip real quick. What we're going to do here is just examine pockets, right? So we've got an offbeat. So I'm just going to make a random rhythm down here using like an E. There's a pocket there. And the next pocket would be like here. You're gonna want contrast, so anytime you can get some faster notes than you would, so. So. You could do it like this. So just examining some of those pockets is a good way to do it. I mean, if you're just if you're just like kind of requoting, um, I can mute this real quick. Let's sec. mute. You can make a harmonic statement. Um, so let's see here. So right here you could do like a dun dun dun. So let me try that. So uh, let me just change this grid to something not fucking crazy. Oh, ace is not enough. There we go. Actually, uh. I could do this figure. Mm -hmm. 
or you could do um you could shorten this to a 30 second like that or um you could try putting it there just be really off offsetting by 16th note is brutal that would just be kind of crazy Let's see here where do i want that i think i had that at the right here before now you don't want to attract too much attention to it something like that makes more sense Right here, they, they're in the pocket, so. Let's see here. I can actually repeat this figure too. So. Right there, like that. I could do that. So that'd be a good accompaniment spot for like an ostinato. So that'd be a good spot for a little ostinato stuff. Um, got these little bass lines here. It's kind of whatever. This is a good spot for some kind of a flourish. So I don't know. Um, you only got, you know, four sixteenth notes there, so. Not a whole lot of space. Might just be as simple as a run, you know? In this case, I'm going to reverse the the motif. The thum, da, da. That's how I'd probably set it off melodically. So if you're just going to do like a old school counterpoint line, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, buddy, I should be doing some harpsichord writing. That'd be fun. If I really get in the neoclassical mood, just do some fucking 12th species counterpoint. Let's make new ones. Fuck it. Um, yeah, definitely figuring out where to put things um has been a big big thing for me when it comes to transitions and everything and learning how to orchestrate it's finding the best spots for things so <sighs> you're learning to free up elements as much as you can so you can bring something else in So as far as um as far as modulation goes um I mean you said the motivic stuff comes easy right for you Damon
or let me just type it I know the streams lagged from what I'm actually doing, so. So you were talking about um, that you get the motifs relatively easy, but the orchestration and modulation and interconnecting them is is the harder part. I, the the only reason I brought that up is because you said that, um, and I just wanted to make sure like you can always use any kind of motivic fragment fragment as like a way to get around. And like, I mean, neoclassical brain in me is just like, okay, I'm in A minor. Um, let me just pull up my piano. I mean, if you're using Circle of Fifths and I need to get to, um, fuck it, um, what's a weird one? I don't know, let's just do something simple. If I'm just trying to get to D minor, it's it's really simple. I need to go from A minor to A major, but obviously I'm not going to do it that way. Um, I'd probably just do, um, G, C, and then to, um, A major. I've used that one before. Um, I mean, I've used all kinds of weird stuff. I used to, uh, there's this one song I have that does minor. It does this pattern that goes from minor to, uh, a, um, 5-7 major. And then it resolves to minor. 5-7. Uh, oh. So, I mean, there's all kinds of, I guess, neoclassical ways you could do things, but just writing motivically is like the best thing to do. So, um, um, in the melody we've got here, we've got this, this, that's a really easy one for us to play with. So instead of having a target key, it's easier to just be like, well, what can I do that's interesting with that? Right? So. Whoops. I think I was talking without holding the mic thing again. I forget I forget to do that sometimes. So you could just repeat the same pattern there. So you could do like um and then do like a and then um maybe Yeah, there we go. then I think it's yeah you could do something like that um or you could do that over the e and then change the chord when you go to land on the B so, uh, e so you could Now that you could treat that as when you actually land on the chord and do something else. So let's try over an E. That's too simple. We could do, let's see, we do A major, 
we could do a minor major minor major or minor 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 or major 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 i figure if we're going for major you know um so let's see so we've got the a a major c major right and then of course we we'd be back at e major and that wouldn't help us right unless we started on a different chord like we did on over here with the so it'd be we could just do that to get to D right and just do like a 5-7 so if we do that progression real quick Now we're in D, so that's a modulation of one, you know, I mean, it's like even though you're moving in whole tones, it's like a modulation a half step down, it moves you somewhere. It really doesn't matter where, right? As long as you come up with a pattern that works motivically for what you're doing. So the opposite was um, if we were holding that um, note and then every time we landed on the quote-unquote previous tonic, we would just go to a different chord built around it. So in this case, I thought the idea of going from a, doing a chromatic median so so now normally see the the interesting thing about doing this e is that these are all non chord tones and then when you're expecting the actual chord tone to land is when it changes the key so we go to c and if that was a, that was the case here we go So, I mean, I guess I'd have to play it slowly because I'm not a great pianist, but we'll try. I fucked it up already. Hold on. I guess it's a way to do it. I just, like I said, I mean, I usually follow the motif. So whatever I'm doing motivically on here is where I figure it out. And eventually you'll land. I mean, it's really kind of cliche to land on a 3-4 suspension, but I, I like it and it works. It really, it gives you like this half cadence and lets them know, hey, we're changing the key. So, I don't know. That's how I do it. Sometimes you can use common chords too, but I usually use that in progressions that move motivically between keys. Like I had this one thing that was in a C sharp minor that uh, used uh, the augmented six and resolved it down to a minor chord and then repeated the same pattern. But what ends up happening is they're tritone apart. So I do it in C sharp minor and then it ends up being in G minor. And then I bind them together by going to a D major which is the relative Neapolitan of C sharp minor. So I go to the Neapolitan and then um, I think I just go to the the diminished chord and then back to one. That that one like this. And notice I use the four on the bottom and treating that diminished chord like a plagal cadence. 
So those are just using like kind of common chords and some, you know, established resolutions because the augmented six wants to resolve half step down to um, the five. But in this case, I'm taking the five and turning it into an augmented sixth to the five of the parallel Neapolitan. And it's a way to look at the German augmented six chord is it's it's like the five of the Neapolitan. Well, it's a five seven of the Neapolitan. But uh anyways, man. Um Yeah, so I got some good ideas, Bruin. But do it in minor now. All right, it's 11. I really got to get to sleep. But yeah, I'll upload this to YouTube later. Thanks for joining me, though. Peace.